SAP Data Engineering. So, in our previous video, we have seen how to export audit logs into different destinations like BigQuery, table and also it can be a PubSub topic or else GCS bucket, right. So, now, so as part of different use cases, right, so how we can basically process those export logs, right, and we can use those transformed information for our further analysis, okay. So, as part of those series of videos, in this video, we will see how we can process logs exported to a GCS bucket by using Dataflow batch job and uh, we'll try to insert that processed or transformed data into a GCS bucket and also parallelly we will try to insert the data into a BigQuery table, right. So, now let us quickly move to the demo slide. So, in this video, we have already seen how we can export audit logs, whether it can be activity log or it can be a data access log into a GCS bucket. So, we will try to make use of those logs and uh, we will try to process that log using our Apache Beam batch pipeline, right. We will we'll try to perform unit test by using direct runner through cloud shell environment. Once it is fine, then we will try to run that pipeline on Google Cloud Dataflow runner, right. Then we will parallelly we will try to insert the data into a GCS bucket and as well BigQuery table. So, this is a simple pipeline basically it has two branches. So, parallelly it will try to write transform data into BigQuery table and also GCS bucket right. So, let us quickly move to the demo right. So, this is the pipeline right, it is a batch pipeline. So, I will try to explain on high level what it is what it is trying to do right. So, basically we are trying to read the logs exported to this GCS bucket ok. So, this is a bucket and we do have these logs and uh, we are trying to access all the data data access logs which are related to uh, year and month and, and also date ok. So, let us try to go to that path this is the path right bucket and API and the, this is a log type and year, month and date. We have 4 logs right available in this path. Now, we will try to fetch all these logs ok using this particular wildcard pattern and then we will try to anyway that log is already I have explained that in, um, in my previous video it, it is in JSON format right. So, by using our Purdue right it is a user defined function to to run our workloads on a distributed and parallel environment right. So, we will write that logging using Pardo do fields right. So, we will try to extract the required information. So, it can have anyway it is a nested JSON file it will have so many attributes. So, but as part of this pipeline so we like to extract only specific fields right for our further analysis right that is what we are doing in our Pardo function right you can see this class it is using Dufin and we are trying to extract the information from proto payload that is the authentication in info and from that again we are trying to extract principal email from where that particular event has been triggered and also job type. So, basically we are trying to process BigQuery data access logs over here right. So, we are trying to extract what is a job type, job type can be a insert job, it can be a listing job, there are many job types available. So, when I am trying to perform that unit testing right, so I will try to show how it look like ok and also info type right and also severity and also timestamp when that particular event has been taken place right. So, it will just try to return that information right. So, then once we have that information what we are trying to do? we are further trying to apply some more transformation to extract even in detail information like so the required information I'm, I would like to constrain uh, my attributes right uh, like job type I want job type right and once I have the job type and info type I would like to perform some aggregation on top of that and that data then I will try to again transform that data 
into a dictionary format and then I will try to write that information into a BigQuery table over here and also a GCS bucket over here. So, these two tasks will be taking place, uh, taken place in parallel actually. Okay. So, now we will try to run our pipeline using direct runner. So, I am setting up pipeline option programmatically. So, first of all, I would like to use the direct runner to, to perform our unit testing. I would like to basically show how this output look like coming from this particular P collection, right. So, let me do that. For that, we will have to comment out. these two task right now it can print so it will read that information and using this pardo it will it, it will perform all this transformation and it will try to output this information job type right info type and the severity right so let us try to run this pipeline using direct runner right so Right. This is the information. It 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 look like this, right? You can see the user who is triggering that particular event. I mean to say the transactions and also job type. So job type can be anything. It can be a insert job. It can be a job completed. Or it can be a query result. Something like that. There are many job types uh, related to the BigQuery and also info type. It can be a info or an error, right? Like that we have different segregations, right? and also timestamp when that event has been or transaction has been taking place okay now from this i would like to again uh, i would like to apply some more transformation on top of this data and i would like to fetch some information right so now you can see so let me right so let me comment out this and now we will see how this output look like. So, from this information again I am just fetching only job type and info type. Once I have that information I would like to count how many such events happening in a particular period something like if, the, if it is a job insert right info type is a info then I would like to count how many such events happening in a uh, in that given window right or in, in that entire life I mean to say we have four lakhs available right so in the entire life how many such job types with the info type combination available that's what I'm trying to do you can see so I'm just reading only job type info type I'm just assigning one to each combination and then I'm just counting by using combined per key right it's a sum basically it will just sum up all these ones right once I have that I'm just trying to convert again that to a dictionary format now we will see how this output look like ok. Let us comment this uh, print now let us run see this output look like this you can see job type job insert info type info. So, we have 362 such combinations are available in a given files right job completed we have 35 and uh, listing 68 something like that now we would like to learn this pipeline on a data flow runner so, ok I think we are good to go let me launch this pipeline on a data flow runner for that first of all we will have to uncomment it out and uh, we will have to set the pipeline options once again. Let us try to use data flow runner ok. So, now we are good to go right yeah now let us trigger this pipeline again. Now, it is trying to launch pipeline on data flow runner. Soon we should see a batch pipeline running on a data flow environment. Okay. So, it is launching job state pending. Now, let us go to our uh, 
chops data flow increment now you can see there is a batch chop has been launched let us click on this job now it should display this pipeline graphic so let us go to our pipeline it's still running oh just i mean sorry actually so while writing uh, the transform data into gcs i've been performing all these transformations right so where i only looking for specific information that aggregated information where job type and info type based on the job type and info type combination i would like to count how many such transaction have been taking place but while writing into bigquery so plain data which is coming from this transformation directly right so i'm trying to write the data into bigquery why i'm doing that because once you have that information in bigquery by using sql you can even apply your transformation you can you can change the data you can query right so with sql it is easy to query any sort of data but while writing into gcs i am again performing this additional transformation and writing the data into bigquery that's why this pipeline look like this you can see once it is available the p collection is available from the uh, the padu output directly i'm converting into a dictionary and writing the data into bigquery so parallelly i'm again further reading that p collection and applying some more transformation like right i'm only fetching uh, some specific information like only job type right and also info type and assigning one for each combination and then Uh, applying the aggregation count per key and then again converting into json and writing into a gcs bucket right so here it has been branched actually okay so it will take some time i think um, so 3 to 4 minutes to complete this job once it is completed then we can see our output coming over here right so in the bigquery so we'll see in the bigquery our table should be created if it is already not i mean if it is not available so this is the data set right let us go to the bigquery so you can see this is the data set it, right now it is empty once that job is successfully completed you can see the table is getting created over here right in the same way what is the gcs output bucket where we are trying to see this is the bucket and this is the output folder there we are trying to write our data okay so let us go to that buckets so this is so there is no data available this is the folder so where it is trying to write that output data once this job is completed then we should be able to see the data coming over here or you can see started becoming dark green right now now we are just pending two steps pending actually it's trying to write this is bucket pattern and also bigquery table remaining steps have been successfully completed right over here right so it should be done in a minute or even before that now you can see this task is completed now we have our put data in our gcs bucket and in bigquery table still it is running so meanwhile we'll go to our gcs bucket just refresh it you should see the data so refresh you can see our output file is available does it in that data right so click on this you can see this is the output right it has been written into a gcs bucket file right and then i think bigquery also it should be completed successfully yeah it has been now completed now let us go to our bigquery sorry editor and refresh the page okay so this is our data set destination data set now you can see this table has been created which has been specified here right now click on this table so details 
right so we have 675 rows preview you can see see this is a raw data i mean to say one level of transformation applied and you can still apply some more transformation using sql you can analyze this data right instead of having nested table in the bigquery this is one example only right so even if you have nested tables sorry nested fields in bigquery you can simply query that using nested and repeated functions available in sql so this is how you can process logs available in the gcs bucket for further analysis using data flow in batch mode right so and uh, you can use it for your further analysis you can write the data into either into gcs bucket or into a bigquery table where you can try to leverage your sql right so this is how uh, this is one of the use case right so in the upcoming videos we'll try to see other use cases so how we can process logs exported into a pubsub topic using cloud functions okay I hope, I hope you are clear so thank you thank you very much for watching this video